Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jake. I'm a third year medical student. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down everything you need to know about antibodies for the USMLA. In today's video, I'm gonna be integrating basic immunology principles with key disease processes that you're likely to see on test day. Now, all the content from today's video is actually from my new pathology and immunology study guide that's linked in the description below. Guys, I'm so excited about this one, really inspired by Pathoma chapters one to three, and I've integrated some really key first aid principles. So let's dive into the first immunoglobulin. Conveniently, this is also the first one produced in your primary immune response, and that is IgM. You're gonna remember this because you go to your mom first when you're sick. So you'll never forget it's the first antibody produced. IgM also fixes complement, which we'll come back to, and has a classic pentameric structure. And you're gonna remember it because the M has five strokes. I also want you to remember because it's a pentamer, it has the greatest avidity and number of binding sites. It's also associated with cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and you're gonna remember that cold weather is misery. Now that we have the basics down, let's tie in a key pathology that you need to know for testing, and that is hyper IgM syndrome. So recall that this is due to a deficiency in your CD40 ligand on your Th CD4 positive T cells. Now due to this deficiency, there's less binding to CD40 on your B cells, and that acts as a co-stimulatory signal usually, and without this, you don't get differentiation into your other immunoglobulin isotypes. And so in patients with hyper IgM syndrome, since they only have a lot of IgM and not the other isotypes to fight off infections, you're gonna look out for vignettes for recurrent pyogenic infections. All right, now into the second immunoglobulin, which is also the key player in the secondary immune response, and that is IgG. And so for IgG, I want you to remember Gugu Gaga for crossing the placenta, as well as the G for greatest concentration, as this one is the highest in the serum concentration. Now, since it can cross the placenta, IgG is a key player in hemolytic disease of the newborn. So look out for things like RH incompatibility or ABO incompatibility. And remember guys, RH negative mothers give Rogam anti-D. Now IgG also fixes complement. And I said I'd come back to this because IgG and IgM are the two immunoglobulins that fix complement. And you're gonna remember that GM makes classic cars. This is gonna help you remember that these activate the classical pathway of your complement system. And so this pathway is gonna increase the activity of C3 convertase and the subsequent steps of the complement pathway. Super high yield to know, IgG, IgM fixes complement. Finally, last thing to know about IgG is that it's associated with warm hemolytic anemia. And you're gonna remember it because warm weather is good. Cold weather is misery, warm weather is good. You'll never get those confused again. So now let's shift gears to IgE. And you're gonna remember the E for eosinophils, degranulation, and histamine. So recall that IgE is located on the surface of your mast cells. And so in reactions like type one hypersensitivity reactions, there's gonna be a cross-linking of these receptors and that's gonna to lead to massive degranulation of these mast cells and release of vasoactive and inflammatory mediators like histamine. And so you're gonna associate IgE with all your AIDS, anaphylaxis, allergies, and atopy, including eosinophil conditions. It's also important guys to know that IgE fights off parasite and helminth infections. Recall that eosinophils are gonna secrete major basic protein and these are really in particular gonna help fight these infections. Moving on, let's talk about IgA. Now it's key to know that IgA is a dimer. And in particular, the USMLE wants you to know this weird factoid that they're joined by a J chain. But anyways, a silly way that I remember this is that dimer, I think of two breasts to help me remember breast milk and other mucosal secretions from the GI and respiratory tract because IgA is key in these mucosal secretions. And it's actually the pyre patches in the small intestine, particularly the ileum, that's the predominant source of these IgA producing cells. And guys, really, really high yield to know about IgA deficiency as this is the most common hereditary immunodeficiency. And as we've discussed, IgA is a key player in your mucosal protection. And so patients who are deficient in IgA have increased risk of sinopulmonary infections, atopy, and a really important high yield fact for the USMLE, increased risk of Giardia infections. So whenever you see deficiency of humoral immunity or mucosal immunoglobulins, you know to pick IgA. Now I saved IgD for the end because honestly, this one's poorly understood and is unlikely to be tested. So don't worry about it. So after today's short but informative video, I hope you're feeling confident with immunoglobulins on the USMLE now all the content memory tricks from this video today are directly from my new pathology and immunology guide. I really took inspiration from Pathoma chapters one to three and first aid integrations to really put together a holy grail resource for you guys. If you're in your final stages of prep, I highly recommend going over this resource multiple times. I guarantee you it will score you extra points on test day. If you're looking for the guide, it's linked in the description. And if you're looking for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. As always, study smarter, not harder. We'll see you next time.